Will Ronnie beat my seven? Very likely. I think it will. Favourite food? Fish and chips, I reckon. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And that, I was, am that, was, me say, yeah. that was me saying it. I wasn't even... You know, pardon, pardon the pun. Okay, Alexandra Palace, the Masters, the second biggest tournament on the calendar. Uh, amazing venue. Let's have a walk to backstage and have a look. Always full, every day. Uh, 2,000 people. Um, it's become, yeah, just a, a fantastic venue. Obviously, the World Championship Darts is here just before this, and then three days uh, to reset for the snooker. So, walk through to, to the venue, shall we? Q zone, different kind of games. It's about, it's about an hour before break-offs. Crowds are just starting to come in now. Bit of merch. Can get through here. Thank you very much. Let's go. So this is the venue. Let's uh, have a walk through into the arena. It's, uh, it's a bit like the calm before the storm at the moment. In about an hour and a half's time, about an hour's time, this place is going to be absolutely rocking. So this is the venue. As I said, empty just now, but when it's absolutely jumping, it's, it's just an unbelievable atmosphere. One table, as we know. You see up in the distance two uh, studios. The one on the left is Eurosport, one on the right. Uh, where I'll be later on today is uh, BBC, comms box right in the middle. And let's go and see where the posh seats are, as it were. Let's go this way. Unbelievable, I, I would love to play here. Um, fortunately, this venue started when I retired, um, so I didn't get a chance to, to play in here, but what an atmosphere. I think it's, this is the third year or the second year of this um, sort of jazzing the tournament up a bit with you know VIP seats where you can actually get uh, a beautiful meal um, wine, uh, champagne, basically whatever you want, really. Hi there. Hi. So this is this is definitely a first for snooker. Um, this kind of thing, it's, it doesn't even happen at Crucible. It's a, there, there'll be no room actually to do it at Crucible, but just have a a look in. So yeah, it's a great place to come and say have a glass of wine and watch your snooker. There's, that's the, that's the view you get. Absolutely amazing. I think it's great that snooker's starting to evolve um, to this kind of thing. It's quite a good vantage point here because right there, if you look down there, that's where the players, the top of them stairs, that's where the players enter from. So you get to see the player walk all the way down there. But yeah, what a cool place to watch snooker. So we'll walk to the other side. Apart from the comms box and the studio, these seats here are Excellent. This is like sitting in your front room uh, watching the snooker. You get uh, drink service. Um, I've seen people with their olives and their nuts and getting a drink and yeah, it's just what a place to chill out and watch the snooker. And uh, yeah, you've got right behind you here is a comms box. This really is a sort of real prestigious event now. It really is. This is actually after the interval, uh, after the fourth frame, this is the way the players walk in, um, back in. Obviously, at the start of the match, they come in from the, the high, but uh, yeah, this is where they walk back in after the interval. And we walk backstage now, a bit of scaffolding behind here, but this is where it all happens in terms of uh, making the tournament. Again, that's the steps up, that's Eurosport Studio. Um, let's have I'll walk up to the, the Beeb studio, where I'll be later. So this is uh, the BBC studio, where I'll be with uh, John Parrott and Hazel Irvin this afternoon. Don't know where I'll be here this afternoon. Uh, when Steve's there, Steve sits this one and asks it here. Uh, John, Parrot has w John Parrott has 1A, does he? He always gets seat 1A, it's not fair. Because if you sit here, you can turn around and watch the snooker. But if you sat there, you've got to watch the telly, so been, I've been downgraded today. But yeah, absolutely fabulous view. Um, possibly the best view in the house. So that's uh, the studio, and if you're doing comms, this is a way to comms. So this is a comm box, and uh, where we find Steve, patiently waiting for his 10 quick questions. Okay, there's 10 quick questions, uh, most of which have been chosen by my followers on Instagram, so thank you guys for those. Um, we're gonna start with question one, Glastonbury or the Crucible? Oh! 
Of course, The Crucible. Yeah, uh, listen, loving the music, great yeah. fun. Never thought it was going to happen, the DJing and a band I'm, I'm involved in, but. St yeah, cut me through the middle. I've got. Uh, yeah, there is snooker written through the middle, even though maybe I don't take as much interest as okay. you. Okay, this is just a little. I'm, I've just. I've got to ask this. How, how long do you reckon you'll do this commentating? You love snooker. You just keep doing it as long as they want you. Or? I, 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 I enjoy. This is this is my sort of dip into the snooker world again. So right. yeah, I enjoy doing this uh, as long as I'm asked to do. But if, if yeah. the, mo the moment happens when people think I'm, um, you know, yeah. when, when it's not part of, yeah, you know, that I'm no longer relevant, that, that the shots I'm calling out are so far off the pace, <laughs> that's the time to stop. I was going to say it's all we know, but it's not you because you're music and you're music wow. genius now. So <laughs> put my glass on this. Uh, single most common error made by a beginner: um, uh, moving their head, lifting their head up. I actually, I actually think that's the most important thing. I think I move my head all the time anyway. Which player do you enjoy playing the most? Or did you enjoy playing the most? Not you. Um, I'd have to say... I'd have to say Alex Higgins for the excitement. I really had a good strike rate against Terry Griffiths. Right. So for some reason, even though he was a great player, I always felt like yeah, I, was in, I was in a comfortable mode. But I'd go Alex Higgins. Okay. Which current player reminds you most of yourself? I'd be honoured to say John Higgins. Will Ronnie beat my seven? Very likely. Okay. I think he will. Favourite group or album? My favourite band has been since uh, the 70s, a French band called Magma. Right. And uh, their album that was the one that, that uh, for me is a desert island disc would be Mechanic Destructive Commando. Okay. Also known as <laughs> MDK, obviously. Obviously, yeah. Obviously. Uh, <laughs> Favourite food? Uh, fish and chips, I reckon. Do you know what? Very underrated <laughs> fish and chips. I, Done it, properly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, uh, I really got uh, recently good Korean food. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And that I was, am that interested. Was me say, yeah. That was me saying it. I wasn't even... You know, pardon pardon the pun. Do you know, when you find a great fish and chips... Mm. Uh, yeah. What would you be doing if you didn't make it a snooker? I have no idea what I'd have been doing if I hadn't... Have made it a snooker but what I probably would have done would be turning up here walking up the hill from the station to watch the top players at Ali Pali. It oh, so you been, loved it even, even? It would have been my hobby. Right, I okay. think it would have been my hobby if I'd have not made it I'd have continued to have it as my hobby and, and, wow. um, but if I'd have never met snooker at all no yeah. idea. Because I'd have hardly watched it before I ever started playing which is weird. But I remember your first world title where the, the SAS thing was going on in London they interrupted it for the the thing in the Iranian embassy, was it? Yeah, but it was the Alex Higgins and Cliff Thorburn final, I think, was it? I, I, think thought, it was was and, I thought it was you and no, it was Alex. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Shows you what I know. Yeah. Which world title is your favourite? Sorry, John. Parrot. <laughs> 18 3. Do you know that's mine? People ask mine. I love the one that you finished a session early. Oh, <laughs> I ruined the final. I ruined <laughs> the. F there was no last session. I know John didn't have a great time, but yeah. oh, gee, I, I just. Every time I came to the table, I knew I was going to clear up. Yeah, so oh. when I, I think my score was 18 5. And the worst thing about it, though, because we had no night session, I got so drunk, I was ill the next day. Because there was no evening session. But uh, yeah, it gives, it gives you a lot of pleasure. Uh, question 10 then Who is your musical influence? I'm not sure that I really have uh, a massive influence in it. Well, maybe my mate. Yeah. Uh, the two people I, I work with, I do stuff with in the Utopia Strong, Carvers Torabi and Michael York, Mike York, they, they have influenced me in many ways uh, with putting me onto new music. Right. And on YouTube, I, I'm very much into listening to a lot of <clears throat> really sort of complex ambient stuff. Not necessarily new age music, but sort mm. of like instrumental, but sort of like a little bit off the beaten track stuff and I follow a guy on YouTube who's my current influencer when it comes to ambient music right. especially and he goes under the title Stunt Rock Confusion. Only Steve Davis can make a quick question answer that long. No but smoke without fire is I, there. I, Pleasure. Great Pleasure. fun. Cheers. I appreciate Thank it a lot. You. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that quick behind the scenes at what is the best probably one of the best venues in World Snooker, the Masters at Alexandra Palace. I'm on air in an hour. I've got to go in there and get my makeup on. So see you next time. And if you like it, please like and subscribe as usual. See you next time. <laughs>